okay, this is gonna get complicated, so I'm gonna make you a deal. If you learn something from this video, you have to subscribe, and if at any point in the video, something that I say makes you say out loud, oh wow, my f then you have to share this with a fashion friend. We're gonna get to Peter Doe's first show at Helmet Lang, but first we need to talk about Helmet Lang the man, who is an incredibly important fashion designer and one of the most important designers of all time if we're talking about menswear. Helmet is one of the few designers that has achieved greatness in quantifiable terms, like the old phrase of everything before you becoming obsolete and then everything after you bearing your mark. I mean, he's certainly one of the most influential designers out there. I mean, you see his influence in almost every collection in the world right now. I recently learned this next little tidbit from the Style Zeitgeist History of Contemporary Fashion class, which was absolutely excellent. They're not paying me or anything, but credit where it's due, you know? Helmut Lang was the beginning of the first era of contemporary menswear. Prior to Helmut, menswear was almost entirely focused on tailoring. Helmut certainly offered tailoring, and his first few shows that featured menswear were essentially all tailoring, except for a couple of pieces. But as he developed, he was able to give a designer's voice to casual menswear that hadn't existed before him. Helmut Lang started showing menswear specifically in 1987, and if we wind it back to that era for, from other brands, we can see that he really wasn't competing with a lot in the menswear world. Suiting definitely can be awesome, but it just doesn't work very well on a runway because it isn't very engaging visually from afar and certainly not via video. And it shows, I mean, Gianni Versace she didn't do a separate men's show for a reason. It's because these smiley chads are not wearing very cool clothes. Really? Yeah, just a bunch of guys come out at one point and are just like, hey, they're actually like going like that. Oh, <laughs> but ultimately, I, wanna, I do want to stay focused here because this isn't an episode about Helmut Lang, the man. If you are interested in learning more about Helmut Lang, I have an incredible video where we interview the owner of the largest Helmut Lang archive on Earth. Earth, and that is Endema. There's also a exclusive video that's only on the Patreon where I just have the uncut, unedited version where we just talk for two and a half straight hours about Helmut Lang's work. We get into a lot of really deep nuance. It's absolutely incredible interview. It's one of the best ones I've ever done. If you want to check that out, join the Patreon today or I'll mess your hair up permanently. Wouldn't that have been so great if I had like accidentally set my own hair on fire? So the big takeaway from the start of this video is that Helmut Lang is in fact very important. His, his, his influence cannot be measured. Helmut Lang the man left the brand in 2005 after the Prada group bought the company and there was a bit of a power vacuum afterwards. Prada quickly sold the company the following year and the new owners relaunched the brand with Michael and Nicole Kolovos at the helm. Okay, okay, so we're gonna fast forward here. I'm not gonna give you the full history because that is available elsewhere online, but the other designers who have been in the role at Helmut Lang since then have been Alexandra Plokhoff, Katsiona Deli, Travis Scott, Shane Oliver, Isabella Burley, Alex Brown, Mark Howard Thomas, and Thomas Cowson. Now, I personally am not a huge like helmet after helmet hater, but that does seem like a lot of turnaround and the output since helmet departed has been more corporate than when helmet was there, right? And I mean, no shade to any of those designers in any way. And when I say no shade, I mean it. I mean, I, I worked at Helmut Lang after Helmut left as a low-level sales clerk. I have a lot of respect for those people that led the creative direction while I was there. I am literally wearing Alexander Plokhoff era Helmut Lang jeans right now. Additionally, uh, the Katio Nadelli stuff that was also available when I worked there, it was so cool on the women's side that when we would have rappers come through to like find like cool clothes for their tour or whatever, they would buy stuff from the women's side because they were like, this is just where all the cool stuff is. And hopefully I don't need to go on about how important Shane Oliver is, but I, my personal unsubstantiated total guess theory is that Helmut Lang would have loved to bring him on permanently as their creative director, but they just couldn't afford him, so they just did one season together. And Shane crushed it. So yeah, lots of creative directors, a lot of talent, but it, it seems like since Helmut left, there hasn't been a lot of meaningful change in the language of Helmut Lang. Like, like I said, it just it feels more corporate. Like owning something that is a post-Helmut Lang, Helmut Lang item is like a, oh, I love these jeans. These jeans will probably stay with me forever. Or like, oh, this is a really solid hoodie. But it doesn't feel like you own a, a hallmark piece of fashion history. I would know. But we are all hoping we're hoping that Peter Doe can fix this because, I mean, Peter Doe is 
fucking awesome, right? Like he's achieved a lot of success in a really short amount of time, especially, and this never gets talked about, but especially when you consider that he started the brand before the big bad three years and had his company survive through the three big bad years. I feel like the fashion awards should just like give out medals to like all brands that started before 2019 and are still standing today. Like just like, a, it's the only participation prize that like actually is like a real achievement. I remember saying in casual conversations in sometime in 2020 that, oh, Peter Doe should be the creative director of Helmet Lang. I was repeating someone else that I had heard say that. And since then, between 2020 and when Peter Doe got announced as the head, I heard no fewer than 12 people express the same sentiment. Something about Peter Doe being at Helmet Lang just feels right. That, in fact, is where things get interesting here. Helmet Lang's influence is massive, but there is a, a section of his influence that continues to fascinate me, which is, I guess, just cherry picking. And that sounds like we're about to get really negative here, but I promise we're not. Do you recognize these images? Because I, I definitely do. Like these, I remember seeing them on old forums when I first got into fashion and now you can't get away from them on Instagram archive pages. Some of them have been seen so much that it is almost kind of gauche to share it again because it's like, oh, of course, everyone has seen this and everyone loves it. This is what made up Helmet Lang in my head. And it, it probably is what makes up Helmet Lang in your head too. And this, honestly, this is the result of fans of fashion and archive pages and different editors cherry picking moments of Helmut's career and showing them to you and then creating this image in everyone's head of, of who Helmut Lang is, of what his designs are. Let's break this down real quick. Helmut Lang designed for almost 20 years. In that, he produced over 4,000 runway looks, individual runway looks, there's over 4,000 of them. Let's just pretend for the sake of simplicity that uh, twice the number of runway looks, that's how many products came out each season. And so conservatively, that'd be 8,000 objects. Okay, so in total, Helmet is responsible for 12,000 things. Okay, now the full scope of that, every little piece, that is the body of Helmet Lang's fashion work. And in order to understand Helmet as a designer, you need to consider a great deal of, if not all, of the 12,000 things. Okay, wipe it clean, start over with me, reset. Imagine that you had never even heard of Helmet Lang, that you were just getting into fashion and I was like, oh, have you heard of Helmet Lang? And you said, no, I haven't. And then I showed you these pictures. I didn't even have to tell you anything, but what you might conclude is that Helmut Lang was this kind of master of color who was bucking up against the minimalism trend of the 90s by showing these like kind of pasty pastels. Obviously that isn't true, or, or at least it's not the full story. I mean, I, I do in earnest, I, I bliss, the fashion critic, do believe that, that Helmut was bucking up against the minimalism of the mid 90s that he was kind of the forerunner of. He was bucking up against that by saying like, oh, if I splash in a little bit of color here in a tasteful helmet laying way, that will kind of be a nice refreshing thing for a lot of people. I think we could use a little bit of color. He was reacting to that, but that wasn't the entirety of his body of work. He is not a master of color. But if we claim that helmet is a master of color, we're not looking at the 12,000 things. We're cherry picking a dozen of the things and then acting like those 12 things represent the whole body of work. Now, it's, it sounds like what I've just described, this cherry picking thing, it sounds like what I've just described is a bad thing. And in most cases, it is, okay, hey, I really need you to hang with me here. Like, I, I know that I talk really fast and everything. Hang with me here. This is the center point. This is what we're trying to talk about. Cherry picking pieces of a designer's work is bad when the audience does it, but it is great when other designers do it. Is Helmut Lang some rebel master of faded color? No, he's not. But a young man named Richard Saturnino Owens was living in downtown Los Angeles when he saw those images in the mid 90s and then 10 years later, reworked the same chalky color palette and made it his own. These muted, dusty, but still bright colors, those are a defining part of the first era of Rick's runway career. And when I went to go speak to Michael at Endima and I got to see thousands and thousands of pieces all organized and displayed and labeled together, I understood that Helmut's work 
isn't just one thing and it isn't five or 14 things either. It is a massively complicated system. Helmet Lang is a language. When someone has established a whole language, other designers often explore that language and form their own little poem in the language of their predecessors. Then they write another poem and then another poem with the end goal being that eventually they'll divide the cell and they'll have their own language. Peter Doe creates beautiful clothes in a genre that's been similarly crafted from cherry picking Helmet's 12,000 things. Some of the most famous and enduring images of Helmet's archive. And I definitely wanna say that it's not like Peter Doe has just molded his entire design language around Helmet Lang, but there is this kind of core, it, it feels natural to us. Again, there's a reason why when someone says like, Peter Doe at Helmet Lang, everyone goes, yes, that makes so much sense. I am so excited to see him divide the cell and further develop his own beautiful design language at his own brand while he gets to continue the legacy of one of his greatest influences at that brand. Hang tight, we not done. Okay, cool. Well, today is the beginning of New York Fashion Week and I am going to start watching the Peter Doe show right now and I'm gonna give my initial thoughts. Okay, on, 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 it's starting. I'm so nervous, I've never done like an initial reaction type of thing. Yikes, Helmet Lang has 519 subscribers on YouTube. Well, the official live stream on YouTube hasn't started yet, but if you look at the Instagram one, there are people who are peering in from the windows, which is adorable, that's very- It's starting, everybody shut up, it's starting. Okay, the pre-runway show short film has now concluded. I think the runway show is beginning. If you are long, meet so I think this show is going to have to, as this, there are more shows in the Helmet Lang, Peter Doe lineup, um, I think it is going to get more complex, but all things considered, for a first show, this is, this has a lot of elements to it. Talking about the Helmet Lang colors thing, I did not like predict that or anything. It's just super weird, a strange coincidence that I was using that as an example of like a really niche part of Helmet's career. And he's not only used like the use of bright colors, but also like the, the motif that we saw at Endema a few months ago of like the, the stripe going down the side of someone. I really like the poem by Ocean Vuong that's on the, the runway itself. It's, it's meant to be a reinterpretation of the Jenny Holzer truisms that Hel Helmet and Jenny did a lot of collaborative things together. Jenny Holzer's whole body of work kind of depends on this idea of um, taking in short phrases and sentences and kind of forcing the viewer to read them very, very slowly. And by framing this um, on its side, it kind of has that same effect of like sort of forcing the viewer to like take in the words and really understand the impact of what's being said slowly. You only get these little brief glimpses of the phrases right side up. We have some prints, which I'm really surprised to see. Um, some re-editions of like kind of the Jenny Holzer truisms, but here with, I imagine those are more of the uh, the poet Ocean Vuong. They, they might be Jenny, hang on. Let me see if I can read one of them. Touch me so I know I am still here. Break me so I know I have changed. Yeah, yeah that's not gonna be Jenny Holzer. That's Ocean Vuong, which is cool. That's, that's cool that like Peter Doe has brought in another artist to kind of be like, you're gonna kind of come up with me here at the same time, very similar to the way that Helmet did, that's awesome. And it's also very cool that both of them are Vietnamese. So yeah, the stripe motif, like the stripe almost has like a printed sash, that's that's something that clearly is being used a whole lot. A lot of color blocking. Um, some of the color blocking sort of looked like a cast, like it was almost like a cast on their sleeve. There's also this, um, it, it really wouldn't be a Helmet Lang show if they didn't have very normal clothes. Because what, what Helmet actually brought in terms of like innovation and stuff was the like crystallization of the idea of a casual uniform made by a designer. So with that comes the necessity that you have to like do just like normal clothes. Helmet certainly had lots of stuff that was very bombastic and there's stuff in here that's bombastic, but there, there has to be normal clothes in order for it to be a Helmet Lang show. We can't have it like a Rick Owen show where it's like every single look is just this like parade of craziness. That stuff is awesome, but in the context of Helmet, I, I would, it would feel out of place if there wasn't some staid, more like uniform, just like tank top and jeans type of looks. And the, the colors in a few of the looks make up the Vietnamese flag colors. I think we're to the flood now. Are we to the flood? Everybody's just kind of like crisscrossing and just sort of like going crazy with the, the directions for things. It also seemed like some of the models were being specifically directed to stare directly into the cameras that are doing the live stream, 
which is a cool touch. I'm not sure I've seen very many shows doing that before. I think the pattern maybe that they're walking around in is supposed to resemble like how people walk around in New York, which is a a, a big jaywalking city. <laughs> like in LA, like they're like nobody jaywalks ever because I'm honestly not sure why. There's tons of cars in both places. But yeah, in New York, everyone is like kind of always crisscrossing and it feels very chaotic. So maybe this is a little nod to New York-ness. I really like the phrase, your car was my first room. Um, when we read the show notes, which were also written by Ocean Vyong, it's, uh, it talks about how cars for young queer folks are these places where they get to talk without whispering and they get to go and finally cry and they get like some kind of emotional relief and distance and stuff. Like Peter Doe being a very influenced by cars is much more than just like, oh, like mechanisms and engines are so beautiful. It is, it is kind of a, um, well, I mean, I think Ocean put it very well that it's like your car was my first room. Very touching. Some of these models even, um, some of the guys that look a little bit older, like maybe they're closer to my age, um, those really look like the Helmet Lang Man from back in the day. I wonder if they reused any models. We just have confirmation from Style.com that indeed there are models from the 90s at Helmet Lang that are back on the runway with this show. That's a very cool touch. I love that. And I mean, Helmet himself, I think, I know Margiela was like this. I'm trying to remember if Helmet Lang was on that same train of like, it doesn't matter if you're a little bit older, like everybody can be a model. It's about people. It's not about like being 20 years old. Yeah, I mean, we, we talked about this in an episode a long time ago, but like you have to, uh, okay. Hey, what's up? How are you? Okay, so now we need to figure out, sorry about that folks. Now we need to figure out if uh, Peter is gonna come out wearing a mask or not. Spoiler alert, I'm no longer watching live. Ah. Oh, he's out. Yep, he's got the mask on. Wearing his own clothes from the collection. Oh, that's very sweet. No, oh, I love that. It's crazy, man. The pressure is crazy. All right, Pete, that's chapter one. We talked about it a few months ago on the channel here, but um, when a new creative director starts at a big house, the, the first two years, the first four shows, are about establishing a strong foundation and usually a very simple foundation from which you can build out your world. And so this, this I think, even was a, a little bit less simple than most of those first shows end up being. But um, I'm really excited to see where else he takes this because it seems like Peter is trying to move very, very quickly at Helmet Line. So, loved it. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think.